Gareth Woolridge, current South African Rally Raid champion, Dakar rookie. It's been an interesting first week. How's your race going so far? Yeah, hi Colin. Uh, hi everyone watching. Um, I wouldn't say it's been the easiest start. Uh, we uh, had a, a lower control on bolt failure uh, in stage one. Um, so yeah, first day was really a, a harsh knock and start to the race. Uh, line. 12th there, but we lost over an hour. Um, yeah, the team hadn't put a, a spare bolt in the, in the car tool, so uh, Boyd and I managed to make a plan with using one of the actual tools uh, to put in place of the bolt, and we got back to the bivouac uh, that evening. So that cost us an hour and a half on day one. And then um, yeah, stage four, we had a, a, a suspension part fail. Luckily, at the end of a long straight, um, it was 170 k's an hour and, and breaking into a 90 left. Luckily, it, it only came out on the left, which was relatively low speed. But uh, that, that did a lot more damage. Uh, the upright twisted around itself. It broke the top ball joint, it broke the brake line, it pulled the drive shaft apart. So there we had to wait over four hours for the truck, uh, which was really mm -hmm. unfortunate. Because um, you know, those five hours plus the 15 hours uh, of penalty we got for being late on the stage, uh, it's really pushed us far back. So difficult to, to make back any ground, really. Uh, we can have some good stage results, but uh, as of overall result, the aim is firmly now just to finish. It's been, you know, when, when we discussed before you left for the race, it was almost as if you were going there as a, as a learning experience, as a test, a test session, um, gain knowledge for to come back with issues on the car that needed some um, development and then to have a, a bit more of a push. From a learning point of view, it, it must be huge for you, the conditions, desert, um, and your first Dakar. How, how's that been from a, a simula never mind racing the car, but assimilating all the additional inputs that come into you? Yeah, look, it's been tough. Um, obviously, the, the lead up to, to Dakar and the preparation um, wasn't quite as much as, as we wanted and needed. Uh, we did some testing in Morocco, but only in the in the open desert. Um, before we came to Dakar, we had done nine kilometers uh, in the dunes. So really, really tough. Nine. Um, Boyd and I did a, a bit of driving in a Can-Am in Dubai, but obviously that's so different from the, the two and a half ton beast when it's full of fuel and uh, the wider track, the longer travel, the visibility is less. So it was really, really tough going into stage six, into the empty quarter. Uh, the rest of the race has, has been fine. You know, we we did Baja Spain in, in July, and Boyd and I work well together. There's been no issues, uh, you know, with us personally or, or with the race craft itself. We've obviously had uh, to do most of the testing leading up to the race, and uh, yeah, I think that's that's caught us out. But the team has learned a hell of a lot, and um, Boyd and I have learned a hell of a lot. Um, yeah, getting thrown into the deep end in the empty quarter was really really something else. The dunes were absolutely massive. Um, we, we start going up them in sixth gear and you finish in second gear at the top. So really, really crazy scenes at, at just how vast and big that desert is. Bit of a baptism of fire that and you know the the 48 hour stage uh, you get to the end of the day and you well, you spend a long day in the car and it's it's not done yet. Got to camp and then go and do it all again tomorrow yeah it was um <laughs> it was tough going um but it was you know it was good fun we uh, we ended up at the same bivouac and any declaration and um we actually had good fun we spoke a lot of rubbish in the evening the the four sappers managed to find a whole lot of old uh, bushes i think probably saw water a hundred years ago and uh, we actually made a bonfire and we all sat there. We cooked our rations together. We, we got some coffee and uh, yeah, we actually had a good laugh. So I'm very sad for them 
uh, they they fell out of the rally yesterday. They only went into two wheel drive, and I think in doing so, uh, Henny hurt himself trying to attack the dunes. You know, they I don't know to be honest how anyone gets through in two wheel drive. So for him, must have been really really tough. So I'm I'm disappointed for them because. Uh, we were jostling for position all day with them passing each other and one got stuck then the other got stuck but it was really a actually a fun night we had good camaraderie and uh, <laughs> funnily enough boyd and our best night sleep there so yeah maybe it's the south african side and the pitch black that uh, made it <laughs> sleep well i'm i'm glad you I'm glad you mentioned that um, the number of South Africans, 52% of the cars that started the race, um, designed and built in, in South Africa. And the camaraderie of, of all the South Africans get, uh, that get together is absolutely immense. And it it's, must be some comfort when you look around the bivouac and you see a, a, a friendly face and somebody from back home and and can touch base and in that unreal world of a relenting Dakar? Yeah, most definitely. Um, there's been a couple of people I've said to Lance, sure, he's a lot more friendly out of South Africa, but uh, I think everybody <laughs> is just, uh, you know, longing for a bit of home and uh, see some of their own people. And, you you know, there's not many other people to talk to. The signal's not there half the time. So, uh, yeah, definitely seeing a, a friendly face, albeit opposition back home and um, we're all man as it's really Dennis and, and Janiel gave us some insight and uh, Boyd tried to you know learn a bit of Dennis from uh, just uh, some basics on navigation before we started and funnily enough uh, Dennis said to us he thinks the the easy places to drive are the are the canyons and the hard places the dunes because you can get lost so easily and Murphy's Law on, on the prologue he got lost in a canyon so it was quite funny and we asked him if he, if he ever <laughs> forgot about the conversation from a, a car point of view, you developed a really, really quick car in South Africa, won the championship in it. You take it into the desert. Um, are you happy with the work that you've done on the car? Or, uh, and, not or, and how long is the list of, of tweaks and developments that you've, the wish list of must-dos, want-to-dos, and would-love-to-dos? Uh, Colin, to be honest, not a lot. Um, I'm battling a little bit with the with the suspension. Um, you know, at home we run Boss, and uh, I'm very used to to those dampers and that handling. And the the Riga dampers we're using now, uh, although they're very comfortable and they they seem to handle the open desert quite well. Uh, it was really really tough going in the dunes, and uh, I'm personally finding the setup a bit too soft. So I'm trying to to make some changes. Uh, I'm finding it difficult to to really attack with that but uh, other than that the, the the cars have been faultless you know my car had the the two failures one bolt and, and one lower uh, ball joint but other than that you know every night has been routine maintenance which uh, I think has also helped the team they're not working late every night they're not tired um, mm. today we've done a fair bit of work for for rebuild obviously but uh, the, the cars have been pretty faultless and I think that's uh, a testament to the Dakota Dakota has done that for years and been really successful in, in using our series as a, as a test. And I, I think really our, our races are, are some of the hardest events in the world. Um, this this racing here is, is tough and it's hard because it's so long, but the stages aren't as, uh, as rough and as tight as ours. You know, the racing at home is really demanding. So I think what, what we do for a car back home really sets it up for, for the rest of the world in, in strength. With regards to, you said, you mentioned now that uh, there's a bit of work going into the car today and during the stage it was just routine maintenance. What changes uh, go into the car today? What do you guys redo or fix or change on, on a rest day to attack the rest of the Dakar? Yeah, so probably the, the, the biggest area of concern always on these cars, purely because of what we're throwing them through, is the drivetrain. So uh, uh, today new the boxes, uh, new clutches, new drive shafts. Nanny's car is getting new diffs. Uh, my car, they're leaving them in. But um, other than that, then it's it's the routine items after that, uh, joints, that sort of stuff. But the the real uh, hard hit items, as we call it, are the gearbox, the diffs, the drive shafts. You know, they 
after the two days in the empty quarter, they've really, really had a hard time. And uh, we also then do the wheel bearings as well, just because of the the loads that those are going through in the sand with the, like I said, two, two and a half tons car when it's full, it's, um, you're asking a lot. So as a precaution, we change those as well. And then from a, a, a relationship point of view between Neil Woolridge Motorsport and M Sport, how's that uh, gelling? Is, uh, do the, the English and the, the Saffirs is the respect mutual, and um, how's that working? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's not bad. Um, a lot of the, you know, a lot of mechanics around the world, although you different uh, nationalities, speak the same language, so they get on quite well. Um, our main engineer, Sholto, from home has come out with us and uh, he's really helping um, on the on the data side, um, checking engine management and that sort of thing. Um, he's caught a few things that, that would have caught us out, so I've been very lucky to have him here. Um, but otherwise, you know, yeah, my car had some mechanical issues to start with, uh, which was really disappointing. Um, but that's all part of learning, you know, and the team is learning as a whole, learning together. So. Yeah, we can we can hopefully only get stronger and, and grow together. Now, Gareth, going into what we've got uh, for six days left of of this epic adventure, what's your tactics and the and the plan for the second half of the race when uh, you get going tomorrow? Well, look, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, we. Um, We've lost so many hours uh, on stage three or four when we waited for the truck. We, we waited four and a half hours. We completed the stage and then got the stage maximum time of 15 hour penalty on top of that. So that's put us like we 25 hours back now um, to try and make any ground is, is near impossible. So we just need to we want to try and put in some good stage times, uh, show what we can do. Obviously, the overall is, is all but dead. But um, if we can show some good stage times, get the car to the end and uh, be back up for Nanny should he need anything, um, that's, that's what we'll do for the rest of the rally. In uh, three sort of uh, main differences in terrain, you've got the desert, the canyons and the, the rocks. Which one of those three terrains are you most comfortable in and which one do you think you need a little bit of work at? Uh, the the canyons and the and the open desert is uh, it, it's quite easy. Um, I say easy as easy as the Dakar can be, but uh, it's more more suited to to racing at home. Did the boy the other day? It reminded me a lot of Uppington uh, in the prologue with the the sand and the stuff we went through, and then we've had a lot of riverbeds and things like that, which we caught a lot of people in. So we comfy there. Uh, I think it's it's the same for everybody coming to Dakar, and that the our weakest point is the dunes. Um, yeah, but like I said, with, with 9Ks of, of driving before we came here in, in a T1 Plus, uh, I'm, I'm happy to be honest that we just got through the empty quarter. So that was our, our mission. Going into that stage, we said we're not even going to try and race it. We're just going to get through. Um, yeah, the car is um, probably you know, even in better condition of the two here. So happy with that and, and minimize the work for the guys, which was the main objective. Uh, lessons that you can bring back um, for next year or this year in the South African Championship? Any big lessons that you can bring back? Um, I wouldn't say so, Colin. It's uh, very different racing here. You know, it's uh, long, long days. Um, and the, the terrain is, is just so different. You know, I was talking with Guy. And he said that uh, Brett is having to slow him down a lot because he says his pace is just too fast for, for the Dakar and he's going to break the car. And, uh, you know, we've, we've seen that as well. Although we're not winning stages, we've seen the pace is good. And clearly the, the pace that we at home, competition home, so, um, yeah, you know, one of our races is maximum attack from start to finish. And... Uh, the cars really wear it. So, yeah, like I said, it's been a good test for, for this terrain. But, um, no, to, to take things home from here is not too much because the similarities aren't really there. 
um, you know, it's it's very open. The the one stage we did, I think the average speed was like 120. Um, a lot of pans and things like that, so quite different. But just soaking it all in and uh, trying to to enjoy it. We don't know if it's the first, the last of many, or exactly where we'll go from here. So we just want to enjoy it. And uh, Boyd and I have been enjoying the the adventure aspect too. You know, like I said, it, we were so far back in time uh, in the empty quarter. We we helped some Can-Ams over. Uh, we pulled them over with our tow rope. Uh, one guy rolled in front of us, so we helped him. Another guy had just rolled, and we were going to hit him. So we stopped. We helped push his Can-Am over and out of the way. And we were just really enjoying the race and the, the camaraderie and the adventure aspect of it now that the, the overall time is, is so great. Yeah. Just from a racing point of view, you said now like you've helped uh, uh, Can-Am rolled in front of you, etc. But like with tricky terrain and you sort of coming through traffic and that, how easy, it, easy, easy is it to like overtake other guys that don't have the pace that you do with terrain that's sort of unpredictable? So that, that's probably been uh, one of the hardest things is, uh, you know, with our failures we've had, we started far back. I think on stage four, we started 164th. We were behind countless trucks, Can-Ams, bikes, quads. Mm. And uh, to be honest, it's actually quite dangerous because uh, you've got the dust of the trucks, you've got some bikes wobbling along in the track behind them, and then us coming at 170 trying to overtake. It's uh, it's really hair-raising. And I'd say at the each, end of each day, I'm probably more mentally drained than physically. The concentration just has to be so, so high. Um, the fir- well, the Stage two, three, and four, we did literally the whole stage in, in dust. So it was so, so tough going, and I was really surprised that you know, we were 25 minutes off or so on those stages because a lot of times we had to stop. We had to go so slowly. So it's been really, really tough. And uh, a lot of the competitors, like you say, are, are awkward pace. The trucks uh, are surprisingly quick. The only time we, we catch them easily is, is in the tight, in the riverbeds. In the open desert, they're really quick. You know, their top speed's 150 or 140, and they get there so quickly. So, yeah, they they like a moving cloud. There's just so, so much dust. So we ended up taking some some other lines through the open desert where we could see it was pretty flat. We just moved up like 50 meters to the side and with having the, the better top end, we could pass them. But it's hair raising because you don't know. There might be a ditch, there might be a bump. Uh, you've got... But it'd be so, so, so handy for you. It's just quite scary, you know. Uh, some of the guys here have, have been saying don't damage the car and look after it. And, and we had a, a crack the one evening. I said, we, we hit a ditch in the dust and they were sort of like, oh, you know, that shouldn't happen or whatever. But it's uh, it's really, really difficult to to actually race at all when you're just in that dust all day. Otherwise, you may as well just be driving around. Now, Gareth, I know you've uh, got other commitments and we really, really appreciate you spending some time with um, us on race day. And we wish you and Boyd and Nanny and the whole of the NWM M Sport Ford team every single bit of good luck. And I hope your second week is a lot simpler, a lot cleaner, a lot faster and a lot nicer than your first week. And everything of the best. Be fast, be safe, have fun in the second part of Dakar 24. Yeah, that's you and me both. Thanks, Colin. Um, I think we've, we've got the, the tools to do it. We just need a clean second. So, yeah, hopefully we can achieve that. But thank you. Thank you, Gareth. Good luck. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Bye. Difficult times, you know, when you're starting at the back and there's so much dust, it's um, got to be horrible. Yeah? yeah, and then you're moving out 50 meters just to try and make yeah. a pass. But I didn't realize the trucks are that fast, and yeah. that makes it hairy, eh? Yeah, awesome. Another lovely chat from live from the paddock the the bivouac in dakar 24. wait we've got more thanks for watching cheers